Hey folks, welcome to Be 5 Bricks. My name's Dom, and I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, a $1,000 Lego set. Is it a possibility in the very near future? Well, I pretty much guarantee it, and certainly we'll see it within the next two years. And the reason I'm so confident is because I've recently read the statistics published by NPD on the adult toy market. And I don't mean the ones you can buy in Ann Summers. <laughs> but you can check out the very interesting analytics and trend tracking data from the National Purchase Diary on their website npd.com. So when it comes to a thousand dollar Lego set, the evidence supports ever increasing demand, ever increasing budgets by individuals with interest in well-established IP, but also plenty of newcomers to LEGO who are keen to experience more engrossing adult builds like the Titanic, Hogwarts, Colosseum, and the very large Technic sets. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the rather interesting data which backs up such a prediction. This isn't just wishful thinking. For a bit of fun though, let's imagine what would actually make a good first $1,000 set? Well, I actually imagine we'll likely see something like a large Death Star, for example, with a smoothish enclosed exterior which opens out to reveal a full playset interior. It would be the perfect candidate for this magical $1,000 price tag. Other options could be a new version of the Super Star Destroyer or a Republic Venator or maybe, and it is just a little bit out there, but maybe a home one Mon Calamari cruiser from Return of the Jedi. But could it really go beyond a thousand dollars and could non-Star Wars sets reach these prices as well? I certainly think so, and the Titanic shows that quite a niche product that isn't linked to bankable franchises like Marvel or Star Wars can sell out and become mega popular like it has. And I'm building it just now and it is incredible. But 10 years ago, I never ever would have thought a set like this that wasn't Star Wars could ever come around, especially at that price point. I mean, a wee while ago, the very idea of a Colosseum set just seemed fanciful. But that's a reality now. I've also read very speculative rumours that LEGO are working on a Giza Plateau set with the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx, and apparently a Parthenon of Athens set and a Machu Picchu set in the works as well. So perhaps a new line of historical architecture sets are on its way, but I think it's more just hyped up rumour and downright speculation, but it is actually believable now given how things are with LEGO. But how on earth do we get to this point where non-Star Wars sets are reaching over $500? Oh hey, if you do enjoy today's video, it would be great if you could give it a thumbs up as it helps spread it to more people. The MPD data shows that the competition is really hotting up, with the likes of Playmobil releasing a $450 USS Enterprise set. Mattel have launched a new Barbie range with the inspiring women, with figures like Rosa Parks, Ella Fitzgerald and Eleanor Roosevelt, which are priced well above the average Barbie doll price. I want to share with you some quite astounding statistics. As of 2021, the UK toy market is worth £3.3 billion. And so far in 2021, a huge 29% of that, so essentially a third, are adult buyers. And only as far back as 2020, this was just 15% of the market. So it's increased by 14% in just 6 to 12 months. And no wonder, yes, there's been financial difficulties for many people, but we've also actually had a lot of people saving a ton of cash by working at home, not commuting, and not socializing. And during the various lockdowns, a lot of adults have been indulging in hobbies, creative pursuits, collecting stuff, and spending money on nostalgic things to make them happier. This has led to this huge increase in the so-called kiddled market, which is so lucrative as the average spend per toy is double that 
of the wider toy market at £16 compared to the average spend per toy for children at just £8. That's a significant statistic for toy brands which they are really capitalising on. And by far the biggest section of the market is 20 to 35 year olds who account for 40% of adult sales, 60% of which are men. So no wonder you have Lego sets like the upcoming DeLorean, the recent Ecto-1 and Batmobile trying to entice us children of the 80s and early 90s to get back into Lego. Another good example of this growth is Hasbro Pulse, the new website purely aimed at adult collectors which includes such items as a £100 Ghostbusters Proton Pack and £150 lightsabers. This kind of stuff has always existed on the fringes and the adult action figure market has been around for ages but now it's actually mainstream and becoming commonplace for many adult fans to collect. It's the same with comic books. It's not kids or young teens that are reading them anymore. It's folk in their late 20s, 30s and 40s. NPD are actually predicting a further growth of 6% in the first half of 2022. So that'll make 35% of all toy sales in the UK exclusively adults. And LEGO has been on the forefront of this, of course, developing the adult range from 2018 onwards with a new focus on ever larger and expensive sets. And not just aimed at men. They're also ensuring they capitalise on a burgeoning female market as well, with the art sets, the botanical sets, and things like the Mickey and Minnie, and the various idea sets that are very adult focused, like the Grand Piano, typewriter and Winnie the Pooh. I'm not saying they're for women, but they have tried to attract women to Lego with these type of sets. And they run lots of focus groups with women to get this stuff right. But Star Wars is the cross time, cross gender, golden goose. And it was instrumental in rescuing the Lego brand in the early 2000s and it has become the main Star Wars toy brand in the last 20 years, overshadowing even Hasbro. And now, with the advent of the $800 UCS 8080, we are in a new era of Star Wars Lego. As indeed, the market research shows that of the 29% of the adult range, 6% have spending levels where they regularly spend over $500 per month on toys. And LEGO, of course, will have their own data from their VIP and LEGO accounts, and they'll know the exact numbers, and they'll have a reliable percentage of fans who are easily willing to spend big on these kind of sets. And this 8080 is only the beginning. We're gonna see some mega sets in the very near future. $2,000 Yavin 4 with a complete hangar interior and space for a UCS Falcon outside an in-scale docking bay 94 or what about a ginormous bat cave that can fit a UCS Batmobile inside or indeed this rumoured Giza Plateau set that's what you've got to start thinking about as that is what is likely coming mind-blowing sets massive sets that offer unrivaled build experiences and huge display opportunities. And we've got to start thinking way out with the Star Wars UCS kind of thing. Harry Potter franchise, Marvel, they've seen growth in expensive adult oriented sets as well and it may well become a reality that a $500 Harry Potter set could be released very soon. And you know with Marvel, Spider-Man, the Daily Bugle set was $300, so an Avengers Tower at $500 seems a very real prospect and it will sell. Universal also have the new Lego Movie franchise deal, so we have at least three movies coming out in the next couple of years, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of these will spawn some very large $300 or $400 sets, 
look at the Ninjago movie set for an example. So, I'd love to know what you think. Do you believe a thousand dollar set is on the horizon? Is it a bubble that will eventually burst and is unsustainable? Or are we really going to see ever increasing prices, complexity and size in the future? Let me know in the comments. And whilst you're here, why not check out some of my other videos and I'll catch you next time. Bye!